since we have been uh, talking about the multi stage machines uh, where uh, each stage consists of a stator followed by a rotor uh, the degree of reaction of a stage may be defined more or less in the same manner as uh, for a rotor okay so the degree of reaction of a, a stage uh, is defined as the enthalpy uh, change static enthalpy change across the rotor divided by the stagnation enthalpy change across the uh, entire stage consisting of a uh, stator and a rotor since uh, there is no uh, work interaction in a stator h02 equal to h01 so this expression may be written as h2 minus h3 the static enthalpy change across the rotor divided by the stagnation enthalpy change across the uh, stage or equivalently uh, the rotor itself so it's almost identical to the expression that we wrote down however um, uh, degree of reaction uh, for a rotor as we mentioned earlier usually varies between uh, zero and one uh, in the case of um, uh, stage the degree of reaction can actually be negative in some cases if the design is very poor or it can actually be uh, again more than one in the case of a stage so uh, we will not go into these two extreme situations so we will look at the degree of uh, reaction of a stage almost in the same manner as uh, that of a rotor itself okay uh, the only difference is that uh, one refers to uh, the inlet of the uh, stator two refers to the exit of the stator or rotor inlet and three refers to uh, uh, rotor exit which would also be the inlet to the following um, uh, stator so that is the notation that we will use let us look at a couple of examples um, to illustrate how we calculate the degree of reaction for a stage the first example reads like this in an axial turbine the rotor and stator blades in the same shape but are reversed in direction show that the degree of reaction of the stage is 40% so uh, let us just quickly go back and take a look at uh, blade shape here uh, in a, using the notation that we have just given so let us look at the turbine stage here so here is uh, uh, one two and three so the blade shapes are the same but they are reversed in direction is the information that is given which means that uh, alpha two which is the flow angle at the exit of the stator uh, should be equal to the blade angle at the exit of the rotor so alpha 2 is equal to beta 3 and alpha 1 which is the flow angle at entry to the rotor is also equal to alpha 3 because that is the same angle at which the flow enters the stator in the following stage so alpha 1 equal to alpha 3 and which in turn is equal to the blade angle at entry to the rotor so that means alpha 1 equal to alpha 3 equal to beta 2. So to summarize, alpha 2 equal to beta 3 and alpha 1 equal to alpha 3 equal to beta 2 is what we will have if the blades are symmetric but just reversed in direction. Okay, so that is what we have written here alpha 2 equal to beta 3 and alpha 1 equal to alpha 3 equal to beta 2. Now, if you construct a velocity triangle with this information for an axial uh, rotor, it should be very easy to show that C2 is equal to V3 and C3 equal to V2 in this case. I urge the student to actually go through this construction and convince themselves of this fact. Uh, therefore, the enthalpy change across the rotor H2 minus H3 is C3 squared minus C2 squared over 2. Since H plus C squared over 2 is constant for an axial machine, and if we substitute for the relative velocities from here, we get this to be equal to V2 square minus V3 square over 2. Now, the change in stagnation enthalpy across the rotor, H02 minus H03, is nothing but the specific work. And we may write it uh, like this uh, using Euler turbine equation. And after setting U2 equal to U3 because it's an axial machine. If we substitute again for the relative velocities from here, we get the uh, change in uh, specific stagnation enthalpy to be equal to V2 square minus V3 square. 
So the degree of reaction, which is uh, defined as H2 minus H3 divided by H02 minus H03, then comes out to be identically equal to one half. 